Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watts Collection. Uh, today what I want to do is that I want to talk about some elements that make a mechanical watch more accurate. I, a lot of this is based on traditional watchmaking, using traditional uh, metals and techniques and so forth with some newer ones, with some newer techniques added to it. Um, now, the one of the first elements of accurate watch keeping is to have the, the pressure from the mainspring. I mean, this is the entire energy of a watch, of a mechanical watch, is from the expanding mainspring. That's all it is. And as that mainspring unwinds the the hands move and in order to to have it as smooth as possible is that having double barrels in parallel that means there are two barrels working together uh will more likely to to be smoother it's sort of like a cart with one horse or two horses. With two horses pulling the same cart, the pressure on each one of them is less. Uh, one horse, it's a little more work and it's more likely to stumble. Same thing with uh, dual or double barrels in parallel. Uh, one example that I have here is, and this is the, uh, uh, the image on that, it's from Andreas Streller's, uh, his work, and that's one of the double barrels that he uses in some of his watches. Now, the other watches that you can find with uh, double barrels, I have uh, one I've probably mentioned more than once, is my uh, F.P. Jorn Chronomat Suvain, and it's got uh, two barrels, and when you wind up the watch, uh, they both help the uh, help smooth out the time. Uh, another one I've mentioned is the Farve Luba Twin Power. This particular model that I show there is called the Farve Luba Sea uh, Chip Twin Twin Power. <laughs> it's if you want a a watch with double barrels in parallel in your collection that you can that's very affordable. Uh, check out the uh, Fabre Luba. You can find the Twin Power all over the internet. Uh, another one is the Schwartz ETN Small Seconds. This is a beautiful watch. Uh, it has a caliber MSC 100. By the way, too, the caliber in the FP Jorn is uh, 1304, and then the uh, Fabre Luba uh, FL 259. Now, another part of good accuracy in a watch is superior hair, hair springs, and two of them, uh, one is the Strawman hair spring, and the other one is the Carl Haas hair spring. Both of them are excellent. Um, there's, in a way, the power behind the pendulum, okay? If you, if you think of a balance wheel, and you think of one spoke on that balance wheel going around, uh, then you can then you can be un begin to understand how a balance wheel works like a pendulum. And as it oscillates one way, the hairspring brings it back and pushes it the other way, and it goes back and forth like that. Well, you have to have a good hairspring in order to have the timing just right. And the the problem, of course, with hairsprings is that they you don't want them to magnetize. And so they have certain ones that have are made of materials that are less likely uh, to uh, to have a problem with that. Uh, the Strawman hairspring and the Carl Haas hairsprings are both ones that I think are both really excellent ones for both accuracy 
and reducing the possibility of having your watch become uh, magnetized. Now, some watches with each one of these, the um, all of the Moser watches have it, the Wootenlanen, uh, the Reek watches, MBNF, there are a whole slew of other brands. For the most part, uh, they don't tell you what they are or who they are. A lot of companies say, well, we're all in-house and mm, okay, but they're using a hairspring by Strauman or perhaps one of the others. Now, another company, a couple watches is Carl Haas Hairsprings. Uh, Andreas Streller uses them and uh, Harbring 2 uses them. Now, the thing is, is that I've had watches with both hairsprings, um, my um, H. Moser's and my Larik have the Strawman uh, hairsprings. Never had a problem with magnetization with either one of them. Uh, with I had a Harbring 2 for years, never had a problem. That watch kept excellent time. I'd like to have an Andreas Stellar, but I can't afford one. <laughs> so that's the way that goes. Okay, um, the the next thing I want to talk about are regulators. Now, what regulators do is that they adjust hairsprings, and the this there are a lot of different types. Uh, three that I want to look at are what is called the Agonpit regulator, and it it's a it's a proprietary intellectual property of uh, Agonor. And so the only ones you'll find, uh, find it are on uh, Aganor movements. And they're able to adjust the proprietary hairsprings of Aganor as well as um, Strawman hairsprings uh, without the use of a collet. And right there, this the one uh, right there is on a, a 6801. Uh, an AGH, Aganor 6801. And below it, you can see the balance wheel. Now, rather than having uh, a, a needle stick out to push it one way or the other, uh, this right on top, it's almost directly on top of the balance wheel. And it is, it can be adjusted with the screws on top of it. And instead of pushing the um, the index or the needle, whatever you want to call it, instead of pushing the index to the left or right, what you do is that you un you loosen the screw and then you turn the mechanism with a screw down at I don't know if you can see it, sort of it's at at the bottom or I should say at about eight o'clock, uh, the screw that's on the one that's uh, that's pictured. And you can have fine adjustment that way, and then you just tighten up the screws without having uh, to to do anything with the uh, with the index. And you also for that same the same one, you can adjust both the timing and the beat together, which is that be makes it very very special. Anyway, that's with the Agon Pit regulator. Now the Grossmann. Uh, index adjuster is one that I really like. I have a uh, Maurice Grossman watch. It has that on it. And it has like a, I, I used to have a garage door opener that had this big long uh, screw. And when you open the door, what it would do, the old screw would, would move, would turn, and then it would, the door um would would open based on the movement of the element that was in the in the in the screw and it would push it back uh this is the same way now you can see the um the index tail is right on top of that screw on the uh on the index adjuster and so you just turn that with a, a little screw that they give you and our screw that's in there and you turn the screw and so you get a very fine adjustment on that using that now the third one is the Moule uh, Glass Huda Woodpecker. Now the Woodpecker is a version of what's called the Swan Neck Regulator. And these are very good. If you have like a, the an index tail, using it on an index tail or the needle uh, 
of the regulator, what you can do with it is that uh, within this, it holds it so that if it's, your watch is jolted one way or the other, uh, your index isn't going to move and make your watch go too fast or too slow. By the way, what do regulators do? Well, on the balance spring, if a watch is moving too fast, they want to make it they wanted to give it a little more room. They want to make it a little bit bigger to slow it down. If it's going too slow, they want to tighten it up uh, so it'll go faster. And so you get just the right amount of movement that you want. And so you can have like this is with both with all three of these, uh, you can have very, very fine adjustments. The the watches that use these here are uh, the Reek. Uh, and Singer or two that use the Agonpit regulators. Um, the Woodpecker is used in the uh, Moulet Glass Hood. I think it's the only company that uses it because it's, it's part of their uh, intellectual property, so I'm not anyone <laughs> quite get a Woodpecker. Um, the Grossman Index Adjuster is on all Moritz uh, Grossman watches. I think it's on all of them anyway. Uh, it's on mine, so that that doesn't mean it's on all of them, but I think it is. Now, the final one I wanted to mention I didn't mention is Glass Hood Original uh, Duplex Swan Neck, or Double uh, Duplex Double Swan Neck. It's got it like this, and these are two swan necks. And what you can do, one of them is used for uh, adjusting the frequency and the other one is used for adjusting the balance and so you can you can do both of them with that uh the same is true with the agon pit regulators instead of just adjusting the uh the rate you can adjust both the rate and the balance now finally i just want to talk about a couple more things and these that have gone into it for years they had a, a one of the early types of things to help make a, a watch accurate is the Fusi and Fusi and chain. And those things, they were big and clumsy. You have something that looks like a sort of a round pyramid shape of uh, Fusi. And then you had a chain that is, as the mainspring would go down, you had the chain would get shorter. And it was, it's, <laughs> I can't explain it fully but it's something like that romaine um got the air uh came up with a little different one it's sort of a 21st century version of it and uh it works a little differently but uh it has it has the same kind of functionality in terms of, of increasing the accuracy of the watch now the last one is called the remontois egalite and the Remontois Egalité is a one of my favorite. Um, and what it does, in order to keep a constant force, there's this little thing called a Remontois that the mainspring winds up. And every so often, like every minute or whatever the designer has, it is used to provide a little power where you can use it and it's wound and it unwinds and you wind and it unwinds. And by doing that, it has a constant force, whereas whereas the mainspring expands, uh, it's, it, it's, I think it's, it's losing, it doesn't have the same amount of force. It starts losing it. And so in order to fix that, they put in this remontois uh, egalite so that here you'd have one place in it that would take care of one little thing but it got its power from the mainspring <laughs> it's very difficult uh some friends of mine interviewed uh Stephen Forsay uh of Force Goubert and Forsay and Goubert or Guber and Forsay get them mixed up what an idiot anyway I am not them but we were talking to Stephen uh, Forsay, and he said, "We, a I asked him, I said, that's such a good idea. Why don't they have it in more watches? 
And he looked at me like, well, it's really hard to do. And I thought about that and saying, yeah, I, I guess so. Otherwise, more watches would do it. Very few watches have a rim and toit galette, and they're all expensive. I And the same thing with the uh, Romaine Gautier and the uh, Fusil and Chain. I think there's another one on uh, Alanga. They have a Fusil and Chain as well. But, I mean, the prices are just sort of really high. The, the idea, though, is to think about the accuracy of watch in these terms as a collector, as a mechanical watch collector. Uh, if you want something, there there's some other ways you can you can put in silicon. I don't like that because I know if you put in enough silicon, you can get a smart watch that take really good uh, time for you. Anyway, I'd like your feedback. I'd like your opinion on this and other ideas you might have. And uh, until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collection. And it's a great opportunity to subscribe if you'd like. Take care.